Hey, Jaws, uh, M.K. Badger Kumar, who was uh, in the Indian Foreign Services for more than 29 years, uh, recently wrote a piece in Asia Times Online. Uh, I want to read you a quote and then ask you to comment on it. He writes, uh, according to Der Spiegel, senior NATO leaders fear that, quote, Pakistan could very well descend into total chaos after the elections scheduled. NATO leaders assess that everything depends critically on President Pervez Musharraf managing to retain his hold on power. If he doesn't, quote, the already half-heartened efforts by the Pakistani military leadership permeated with Islamists to stem Taliban and Al-Qaeda activities in the Pashtun tribal regions could fail completely. He talks about the possibilities of an alliance after the elections between Sharif's uh, PML and the PPP coalition government. And he says, even assuming that coalition government refrains from confronting Musharraf, its willingness to go along with the, quote, war on terror on Washington's terms is highly doubtful. Any elected government will be sensitive to the deep-rooted opposition to the war in Pakistan public opinion. Former Army intelligence analyst and consultant William Arkin is claiming that Washington was expecting, in terms of an agreement reached in November with Islamabad, to, quote, vastly expand the U.S. military presence in Pakistan's frontier area. Arkin wrote in the Washington Post that, quote, first U.S. personnel could be on the ground in Pakistan by early in the new year. Arkin says, what appears to have been under discussion is a shift for the U.S. military and for U.S.-Pakistan relations, whereby Musharraf will lift restrictions on U.S. involvement in cross-border military operations by special forces, as well as paramilitary operations within the Pakistani territory. And he says the Washington Post has separately reported that planning for the proposed U.S. military deployment in Pakistan is already underway at the headquarters of the U.S. Special Operations Command in Tampa, Florida. Um, Ajaz, if the U.S. objective here was to make a deal with Musharraf, and in theory they had one with Bhutto, to allow direct intervention by U.S. forces in the northwest frontier provinces, um, first of all, does that seem like a, a plausible proposition, and then two, what happens to that plan now on, after Budo's death? Uh, Paul, uh, Mr. Bhadra Kumar is uh, one of the most astute and knowledgeable commentators um, writing today on these affairs. William Arkin is a very seasoned man with uh, all sorts of contacts in Washington, and I would not take the opinion of either of them lightly. My sense is that that was probably the heart of the deal with Benazir, that she will come to become the Prime Minister of Pakistan at the head of a legitimate elected government and would allow Pakistan, the U.S. Special Forces to operate from Pakistani territory in a very big and open way, which the Pakistan army has not been willing to grant. My difficulty with all of that is that the Pakistan army understands a few things far better than the U.S. does. 20% or more of the Pakistan army, including large section of its officer corps, comes from the northwest frontier province, and the people against whom these actions are to be taken are their kith and kin. They are very reluctant to find a military solution to the problem in the northwestern frontier province. They understand that this is part of the Pashtun nationalism, which exists on both sides of the border. Pakistan army understands that if they were to allow the American special forces to come in in a very big way, it would have very detrimental effect on their relationship with China, because that means U.S. special forces come within about 200 miles of the Chinese border. It's also an area where I understand most of the Pakistani nuclear weapons are maintained. Yes, it is a very sensitive area. It is an area that is very close to Russia, very close to China, and actual American troops in any number operating from the Pakistan territory isolates Pakistan then from very many forces, such as the Iran and so on. So my sense is that Pakistan army would be extremely reluctant to have them operating from the Pakistan territory in the way in which Arkin is predicting. 
I think for now, that plan will have to be postponed until after the elections. Benazir had the authority, the political authority, to get elected and say this is very important for this country and therefore I'm adopting this policy. This policy of a, of a, of a more aggressive p position towards the uh, extremist forces in the of in permitting the, the U.S. special forces to come in in a big way, as William Arkin puts it. Makhdoum Amin Fahim does not have that kind of stature. Nawaz Sharif neither has the stature nor the political orientation. He is beholden to the Saudis who will be very uncomfortable with that kind of proposition. The problem is that Americans are facing a great strategic debacle across the region and they're desperately looking for military solutions which don't work. What would be a solution that might work? Solution in my view is that Pakistan should disengage itself from the war in Afghanistan altogether. It should respect Pashtun nationalism which has arisen against foreign occupation. It should facilitate contacts between U.S. and Karzai government on the one hand and various shades of Pashtun nationalism as well as the Taliban with whom both uh, the Pakistan government and now even the Karzai government are in dialogue. Pakistan should play an, a moderating role, a neutral role, rather than become a party to a war which will spell disaster for, the, for Pakistan as a country. That's certainly not the American plan for Pakistan. That it has to disengage from that American plan altogether. Whether or not the Pakistan military will have the guts to do so is another question altogether. The entire Pakistani elite, both civilian and military, is much too closely tied up with the United States. Vast majority of Pakistani population is opposed to all of these policies, not because they are in some, you know, crass sense anti-American or anti-Western or anything like that. They're just liberal people, but they know that it is this is a disaster for their country. So if either the military or the new incoming government undertakes that policy, they would have much of the Pakistan population greatly dissatisfied and angry with those policies. And Pashtun and uh, Baloch nationalists actually picking up weapons to fight them. What I'm arguing is that there is really no military solution. There is no military solution in Iraq. There is no military solution in Afghanistan. Nor is there a military solution in Pakistan or no northwestern pa Pakistan or whatever. Just as there was no military solution to the nuclear issue in Iran, the United States thinks that it can find military solutions to these extremely complicated political social problems.